Have you ever experienced this problem where you have a couple of pictures, they look like they're the same size, and you're going to be bringing those into a project. Let's just bring this one in here and minimize that, and then bring this one in here as well. But once you bring them in, they're obviously much different sizes. One is a lot larger than your project. One's a lot smaller than your project. Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you what's causing this and how you can control this. And we'll be talking about resizing images here inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this one layer here. And we'll get rid of this layer as well. There we go. And I have two images down here. There is one. Bring that one up. And here is another one. Same picture as you can see. But these are actually different images at different sizes. Let's take a look at our background image back here. I'll bring this one up up to image, come down to resize right there at image size. And in here, this shows you the pixel dimensions, the width and the height, and the resolution of the image. And this is important information to know to understand exactly what's going on here. So let's take a look at these two images here. This one, if you look at the title bar right up here, the important thing here is to notice the percentage here. This is at a 52.5% zoom on this. And this image over here, at the same place up here. This is a 12.6% zoom. So obviously this is a much larger image because we're at a much smaller percentage. Now the problem is that Photoshop Elements always brings things in at about the same size visually inside your workspace. But it does mean that these are actually that size. Let's compare these two. I'll first take a look at this one. Go up here to image, come down to resize, image size. And so this is a resolution of 300. It's a very big image. Document size 26 inches by 17 inches, real large image size. So this image, even though it looks like it's about the same size as that background image back there, maybe a little bit larger, it's actually a lot larger than the image back there. And if I zoom out on this, I use the scroll wheel to zoom out until it's at rest about the right size. That's pretty close right there. It's a little bit smaller, but not by much. I'll zoom in one notch, I should be even closer. Okay, it's just about the same size right now. But this image is at a 10.4% enlargement, and this one back here is at a 25% enlargement. So again, they're obviously different sized images. This is a lot larger than the image here in the background. So that's the first thing to keep in mind when you're working with images like this inside of Photoshop Elements. You want to make sure that they're at the same size and the same image size, or at least at the correct image size to fit inside your project. Let's now compare these two images. I'll take this one, I'll drag this one in. It's that big, get this out of our way. This is our 72 pixels per inch image. I'll drag this one in. Much, much smaller. And this is just because of the pixel range. These are actually based on the same image. One is at 300 pixels and one is at 72 pixels. And the reason for the size difference is that this has 72 pixels per inch. So one inch of this image is 72 pixels. One inch of this image is 300 pixels. So it's about four times larger than this image is here just because of that pixel dimension. Let's hide this and I'm going to bring this and scale this down a little bit. Let's just zoom out. I'm using the scroll wheel, by the way, right now to do this zooming in and out. Now I can go over here and grab this control handle and I can resize the image just like this, just by resizing it. So I'm actually making this image a smaller image when I do that. And here's this one. So it now fits better on the image. Now, when I did that resizing, I'm taking a much bigger image and making it into a smaller image. It now is taking up less of a range here on the pixel dimensions. And that is a problem, potentially, if you do this a lot. Let me bring up a grid in here. Up to view and bring on grid. Here we go. Here's a, just a little basic grid. If I take this image and I put it right up to that grid line corner up here. And let's pull this up here so it snaps into that corner right there. There we go. So at this size, let's just say that each one of these is a pixel. And at this size, this image has this many pixels across to fill the space. Each one of these has four, so that's four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 36 pixels across to show the image. If I show this image down here, notice how there are much fewer pixels to show the same image. Now, what happens because of that is that since there are fewer pixels to show the image, it isn't as sharp. And I can demonstrate that very easily. Let's just first hide that grid. And I use the Control Z keyboard shortcut here to back up a couple of steps. Let's just get back past the enlargement. There we go. Now at this point, these are both the same size image, just different pixel dimensions. I'm going to zoom in on this image. Have our zoom tool. 
and we'll just zoom in. And I can get a long ways in here. Just keep on zooming in. And eventually, you begin to see the actual pixels in here. Each one of these pixels is a single solid color. And it's the combination of those pixels and the solid colors and side by side and so forth that gives you that photographic effect on the image as I back out. So there are lots of pixels in there to show this image. If I hide this one, bring this one up, I'll do the same thing down here. Again, this is the same size picture, but it's a much smaller pixel dimension. If I zoom in here, you see already I'm beginning to see some pixels in there. Zoom in closer, and we're getting to see the actual pixels right here. But as you can see, we're much further away from the picture. There's far fewer pixels in here to show these eyelashes, for instance. So these eyelashes tend to look a little bit fuzzier, a little bit softer or blurrier at this lower resolution. So the higher the resolution you have, the sharper your picture is going to look, obviously, because you have more pixels to show anything that you're looking at in the image. Now, where this all becomes a problem is if you have something like this that doesn't really fit your image, you want to make this fit, or obviously it's too big for my picture, it's the wrong size. I can adjust this, and as I saw before, you can drag these in and pull these down. And that's nice, it now fits in the area, but it's not as sharp as it used to be. We've actually lowered the sharpness because instead of this image being way out here with all of those pixels to display the image, I now only have this many pixels in here to display the image. So fewer pixels to display the image, just like in this picture over here, it's going to be a softer image. We'll see some softening on that. Let's just do a control Z back out of that. Make a duplicate of this layer, right click, duplicate layer. There you go, I'll take the copy layer here. Let's bring this one down in size like that. Same picture, but if we zoom in, you can see how there's less detail in this picture than we have up in here. But because we've reduced it, we're losing a little bit of sharpness on that image. Now what happens, when we're going from this size image here to this size image here, bringing it down that much, Photoshop Elements has to go in and recreate this image at this size, at this number of pixels. And if you go out here, you can see there's our pixel size out here on that one. We had all of those pixels across to make this image. Down here, we only had this number of pixels in here, so, so we had to lose all of those pixels. And the way that Photoshop Elements does that is it will take a pixel and then remove the ones to the side of that, take the next pixel, remove the ones to the side, take the next pixel and so forth. And obviously if you do that enough, you're gonna to begin to lose detail and you lose sharpness in the image. The opposite happens if I have a picture that's too small like this and I have to make this larger like that. So it's now taking up more pixels. So Photoshop Elements has to go in and make up those missing pixels. So adding in more pixels to make this work. And the way it does that is it looks at two pixels and then blends the color between those two pixels to give you a larger range of pixels. Another problem in here is if I do a lots of changes, so I brought this down like this and chose okay. Photoshop Elements has removed a lot of pixels when I did that. Let's now bring this up to here, choose okay. And I'll do that again, I'll bring it down to here. Let's get real small this time, choose okay. So it has now, again, removed a lot of pixels. Let's bring it back up again, choose okay and Photoshop Elements now has added back in pixels. And notice as I'm changing the sizes, it's getting softer and softer as I do. It's getting pretty blurry at this point. That's because each time I do that, it's adding in or removing pixels based upon the previous size that we had in here. I just did this four times and it's getting very, very blurry because of that. So if you think you're gonna have to be changing sizes a lot, there is a trick to do this so that it's not gonna be causing you that problem. Let me show what that is. Let's hide this one. I'll go over here and file and come down to the place command. And here's my 300 PPI image. Let's place this one. It places it in to fit on your page like that. So it reduces it to fit on that page. And it comes in as a smart object layer. You see the little icon right over here. Now, one of the benefits of having a smart object layer is that if I resize this like that and choose OK, Photoshop Elements goes back to the original and figures this from the original image. If I bring this back up again, same thing. Photoshop Elements goes back to the original and brings it back up. Let's just do this another time. I'll go real, real, real small like that. Bring it back up again. Notice how it stays sharp and it refigures that image. That's because the size is only being changed just the one time. It's always going from the original and then just the one size change. So if you think you're going to have to be changing your size a lot, making adjustments on your picture, however many times you have to do that, 
The best way to do that is to place your image in your project instead of dragging and dropping into your project. If you're only changing it one time, then you're fine, or even two times, there's probably no big deal on that. But if you're changing it a lot, and you want to have this coming in as a smart object, and that solves that particular problem. Let's now bring that image back up again. Open Recent, and I have that one right here. There we go. Here's the original image. A better way to do this, and this takes some planning, I want to bring this into my project, and I want to get it at that right size and get it as tight and clean as possible. And that's to adjust the size first and then import it after we have it at the right size. Now this image right here, if we go back over to this one, if we look at our graph up here. This is just about nine inches across, not quite. I could make it exactly nine if I wanted to. Let's pull this down like that, make it exactly nine inches across. There we go. Let's say that's how big I wanted to have this on my picture. The best way to do this is to resize your image first and then bring in that resized image. And the reason for that is that we have more options when we do a resize of the image. If we're just doing it back here by dragging and dropping, then Photoshop Elements uses its default technique to make that adjustment. But it has several options and we can choose the best option. Okay, bring this one back up again. And before I do anything on this one, I don't want to be changing my original image. So let's save this out as a copy, file, save as. I'm just gonna put a dash two after this one. She's okay, there we go. There's the dash two. So I'm working on a copy of the image, not the original. Go up to image, come down to resize image size. As we saw before here, there's our width, there's our height in pixels, and here's the width and height in inches. If I want to make this exactly nine inches wide, I'll just change that to a nine. Notice how the pixel dimensions come down, everything else comes down, resolution stays the same. But right down here, we have options on how we're doing this resize. So we have five options instead of just the one default option. There's Bicubic Smoother, which is best for enlargement. Bicubic Sharper, best for reduction. We're doing our reduction, so I'll leave it at that one. We also have Bicubic, which is best for smooth gradients, like skies with a gradient in the sky, things like that. Nearest Neighbor, Preserving Hard Edges. This is very good if you're working with graphics where they have hard edges. Any kind of an enlargement or reduction is going to be softening your image one way or the other. You just want to find a technique that softens it the least amount. And then Bilinear, old technique, doesn't work as well. For most uses, I found that you can just go with what it says right here, best for enlargement or best for reduction. We're going to be doing reduction. Choose OK. It resizes that image to that size. Now, when I drag and drop this over in here, like that, it comes in at that exact size, and it's already been resized, and it's nice and clean, and that will give you the best sharpness that you can get on your images. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, I have a complete training course for this, and I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Now, if you found this discussion helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. I do new videos all the time. You don't want to miss any of those. And I'll see you next time.